Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm Brandon. If I'm ever shot at the gas station, assume I'm already dead, Perna. Also assume I died heroically, saving women and children and puppies and the babies of puppies. Do not assume that I will have the man strength to post a video of myself riding to the hospital telling everyone that I love them like Texans former third round draft pick Louis Nix did. This needs to get on the love everybody. Right, that's right. I can't contact nobody right now. I'll have more on that. The Jets out jetting themselves. What's actually wrong with the Steelers and a whole bunch of NFL news today. That's good sports. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for constant football news. It's free. Today's episode is sponsored by Raycon and the Everyday E25 earbuds at buyraycon.com slash that's good. Now's the time to start dropping hints that you want the most affordable premium wireless earbuds for the holidays. Or buy yourself a pair now so you can tune out the noise that is your crazy family at Christmas. Their noise isolating fit and long battery life ensures you will not hear a word of crazy Uncle Randy's conspiracies this holiday season. The Everyday E25 earbuds are a perfect gift for the people you'd prefer listen to music rather than talk to you. That's why I'm giving my Uncle Randy two pair. Raycon is being extra generous for the holidays with a great price offering all that's good sports viewers 15% off right now so you can save big on your gift shopping. So click the link in the description, buyraycon.com slash that's good for your 15% discount now. All right, the most urgent NFL story of the week is of course, Chargers lineman Forrest Lamp who is now selling forest made lamps. Careful, before you rush to purchase one of these Sequoia lamps from Lamp Plus, rumor has it these lamps break easy. This is the first season Lamp has played in more than seven games, but I have to confess, I love Lamp, I love Lamp. And that this is the greatest three point stance and product endorsement based on someone's name I've seen. I mean, I don't know what the hell C.D. Lamb was thinking when he tried to sell CDs for lambs. Not only is that an obsolete media CD, lambs don't listen to hip hop, bruh. Everyone knows they're into folk rock and Norwegian death metal. Vikings fullback C.J. Ham has had some success selling honey spiral hams over the holiday season, but the bar has been set by Lions John Penasini and his addictively delicious penis-shaped pastas. How could you resist buying a box when its slogan says, once you put my Penasini in your mouth, you'll never want to take it out. Best served with a heavy cream sauce. While discussing the uh, Chargers, here's an achievement. They currently rank top 10 in offense and defense and are also dead last in their division. Now this isn't nearly as impressive as 2010 when the Chargers finished first in both offense and defense and still missed the playoffs, but it's pretty damn close. This really underscores how important special teams can be. Last week, the Chargers had a field goal that was blocked and returned for a touchdown, allowed a punt return touchdown, another punt return of over 60 yards, had 10 men on the field, and then 12 men on the field on special teams plays. They've literally only made it through one game this season without a mistake by their special teams. But don't worry, Chargers faithful, Anthony Lynn has taken over special teams duties. No way the guy struggling to be a head coach does worse with more responsibilities. Former Bengals wide receiver Chad Johnson used to call his coaches at 2 a.m. and tell them he was open and then hang up the phone. Man, the NFL was so much more fun with Chad Johnson in the league. Nowadays, you just have guys like Carson Wentz calling Doug Peterson at 2 a.m. and saying, I'm sacked and then hanging up. 
or Tom Brady calling Bruce Arians at 2 a.m. saying, send help, Antonio Brown is in the corner of my room watching Giselle and I sleep. Former Texans nose tackle, this is our big story, Louis Nix III posted that video to his Instagram account after he was shot and robbed at, you guessed it, the Florida gas station while he was putting air in his tires. Nix spent a couple years in the league bouncing around from the Texans, Giants, football team, and Jags rosters. He's most well known for his time at Notre Dame and his perfect self-given nickname, Irish chocolate. Nix later posted to Twitter notifying everyone that he is alive and that the bullet ricocheted off of his sternum and safely landed in his fucking lung. Nix, you have just earned yourself the Big Dick Player Award! What a man. Scared he might not make it, and with no way to properly contact his family, he records a video telling them that he loves them. Nix is reportedly doing well at the hospital now, and I hope news of the BDP award helps him make a speedy and full recovery. You're a man, Nix. Nix stated that he did get a decent look at the man who shot him, said he was about six foot four, Caucasian, had a bunch of rings and jewelry on his hands, maybe a little too much Botox, and he kept yelling, that's too much air. Stop with the air! That's too much air pressure! That's too much air pressure! That's too much air pressure! Before shooting Nix and then fleeing the scene. What, you think Tom Brady being in the state of Florida at the same time this happened is a coincidence? I don't think so. Also, I bet you didn't think a deflate gate joke could be funny again, did ya? You're welcome. Now the New York Jets Walter Payton Man of the Year nomination goes to Pierre Dessert, which is newsworthy, not because of Dessert's charitable contributions to the world, but because the Jets fucking cut him in November. Yes, uh, come into my office, Pierre. Now we think you exemplify everything it takes to be a member of an NFL football team, both on and off the field. And that is why we have been left with no choice but to cut you. Your positive influence on this team and community, along with the Raiders, is the biggest threat to us getting Trevor Lawrence. So please, get the hell out of our building now, and don't ever show your face around here again. The Browns took the opposite approach and named Miles Garrett their Walter Payton Man of the Year candidate. I know Garrett uh, has done great work off the field uh, since he didn't really have a choice for half of last season after trying to debrain Mason Rudolph on primetime television. Uh, there's no way though that the NFL gives the award to a guy who did one of the most violent things we've seen on a football field since, well, every week that we watch actual football. Wayne Gallman said Eli Manning once crop dusted him in the locker room farted right in his face and then walked away. If that doesn't make you think Eli Manning is worthy of being inducted into the Hall of Fame, nothing will. Now, I'm a little bit worried about Washington head coach Ron Rivera and his diet. Ron revealed during uh, his cancer treatment, for breakfast, I had pancakes, and to help swallow, I had what amounted to three cups of syrup on the two pancakes. Water tasted terrible. The only things I could truly drink were root beer and Mountain Dew. Those tasted normal and helped me eat from that point on. What's crazy is one of the foods that helped me get through this was Taco Bell tacos for whatever reason. Now, whatever it takes to get through the hell that is that kind of cancer treatment, I understand. My hope though is that Ron does not continue to consume Taco Bell, Mountain Dew, and cups and cups of syrup every day now that his cancer is in remission. 
Nothing will fuel those cancer cells like copious amounts of sugar and the chemicals the FDA says are okay for flavoring soda. Rivera lost 32 pounds during his treatment and Taco Bell has already reached out to him to be a spokesman for how eating Taco Bell every day can help you lose weight which I find highly inappropriate, Taco Bell. We all know what happened the last time a fast food chain used a spokesman who lost weight eating only their food. Getting skinny on what amounts to junk food makes you attracted to kids, Ron. Do not take that deal. The Pittsburgh Steelers lead the league in dropped passes right now. Alex Kozora pointed out on Twitter, 14 of those drops have come in the last two weeks. After Pittsburgh lost to the football team, everyone is questioning their offense. The drop passes and batted balls definitely hurt them against Washington, as did their inability to run the ball, but I have a couple of thoughts here. In regard to the drops, I think that stat might be a little bit misleading. Ben Roethlisberger also leads the league in passing attempts. So leading in drops seems to coincide with that. Especially if you look at the top five teams in drops, which are the Steelers, Lions, Cowboys, Packers, Falcons, and Bucks. And you will notice a trend here. Big Ben is number one in passing attempts. Tom Brady is second, Matt Ryan is third, Matthew Stafford is ninth, and the Cowboys as a team lead all of the teams with 503 passing attempts on the season. If anyone has been most affected by the drops, it is Aaron Rodgers, who is 13th in attempts, but fourth in drops. But Aaron Rodgers is so good that he has also maintained the highest completion percentage of any of those QBs. Another thing to consider for his MVP candidacy. The Steelers do use short passes as part of their run game, the same way the Patriots did for years. However, Pittsburgh needs to do better when they do run the ball, and maybe getting James Conner back from injury will help, but I think the absence of Mike Munchak and the retirement of Ramon Foster are two significant reasons they have the second worst run blocking grade in the NFL right now. They're not passing more because it's a true strength, they're doing it because they suck at running the ball, and that could easily get them bounced in the postseason early. And finally, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Just when you thought 2020 was a closed book, we get a last second miracle. The Dallas Cowboys have been flexed out, out of Sunday night football. I never thought I'd see the day. So we're no longer getting 49ers versus Cowboys. Instead, oh, instead we're getting the Browns at the Giants week 15. Okay, sure, not a total win uh, for the cause since they flexed out an NFC East team for another <laughs> NFC East team, but I think we would all much rather see the Giants than the Cowboys at this point. Just like we'd rather see Mason Rudolph have to give Miles Garrett the Walter Payton Man of the Year award rather than just seeing Miles Garrett win it. Boom! Thanks for watching That's Good Sports here on YouTube. Click the video on the screen right now if you want to watch more of my bull crap. I got a lot of bull crap videos here. Watch a hundred of them and see if you keep your sanity.